This episode of Legal Eagle was made possible by Skillshare. Learn to think like a lawyer for free for two months by clicking on the link in the description. Don't care how I want it now. Yeah, that is manslaughter bordering on negligent homicide. A jury would convict Willy Wonka like that. Hey Legal Eagles, it's time to think like a lawyer. Today I am very excited to start a brand new series on this channel where I examine your favorite fictional works to tell you all of the laws that have been broken during the course of that movie or TV show. Today we're going to start things off by examining one of my favorite childhood movies, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Let's see if I can ruin your childhood as much as law school ruined mine. Be sure to stick around until the end, where I give you my verdict as to how much money Willy Wonka owes and how long he's going to jail. A little background about myself. I have been a practicing lawyer for over 10 years. I am admitted to the bar in five states, including the District of Columbia. I have handled hundreds of millions of dollars worth of cases, both on the plaintiff and the defense side. And in my spare time, when I have any, I teach law students how to kick ass in law school. I serve all his TV dinners right here. He's never even been to the table. So I am eminently qualified to examine a work of fiction to tell you all of the laws that it has broken. So without further ado, let's dig in to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Hi, Mr. Joe Peck. Ah, come along, Charlie. You're late. It's payday, Mr. Joe Peck. You're right. There you are. Thanks. Say hello to your Grandpa Joe. Okay. Okay, big problem right off the bat. Charlie is way too young to have a paper out. I think this is a child labor violation. Here, this is governed by the Federal Labor Standards Act, or FLSA, which states that no one under the age of 14 can hold a job in the United States. So later on in this movie, Mike TV actually mentions that he's 12 years old. And because I think all the children are supposed to be exactly the same age, I think Charlie is clearly under the age of 14. Therefore, while Mr. Jopek here may be thinking he is doing a good thing, he's actually committing a child labor violation. Oompa, loompa, doompa dee doo. What's happening? Willy Wonka's opening his factory. He's gonna let people in. You sure? It's on the radio and he's giving truckloads of chocolate away. Class dismissed. No, no, it's only for five people. Class undismissed. He said him five golden tickets and the people who find them will win the big prize. Where's he hidden the tickets? Inside five Wonka bars. You gotta buy Wonka bars to find them. Class three dismissed. Okay, big problem here. This is a clear violation of sweepstakes law that exists in most states. You might notice that whenever you see a giveaway on TV, there's always some fine print that says, no purchase necessary. There is a very, very good reason for that. The reason is if you require purchase, you're no longer a free giveaway in a sweepstakes, you are in a legal lottery. That's the difference between gambling in a lottery and a sweepstakes, which is just a giveaway. That's why you always hear that no purchase is necessary and you can participate in the giveaway without actually making a purchase. Willy Wonka has not added that language and he explicitly requires you to buy his chocolate bars in order to participate in the golden ticket hunt. That is a clear violation of sweepstakes law and my guess is that he would be on the hook for the millions of dollars that people have spent buying Wonka bars in order to participate in this particular sweepstakes. If you're not greedy, you will go far. I want it now! What's the matter with those twerps down there? For five days now, the entire flipping factory's been on the job. They haven't shelled a peanut in there since Monday. They've been shelling flaming chocolate bars from dawn to dusk. Make them work nights. Come along, come along, you girls! Put a jerk in it, or you'll be out your ears, every one of you! But listen to this, the first girl that finds a golden ticket gets a one pound bonus in her pay packet! What do you think of that? All right, that is another FLSA violation. He is clearly pushing his staff far, far too hard. They're working for five days straight from dawn until dusk. He's making them work overtime without paying them anything extra. That is a clear violation. That's called a wage and hour violation. I have friends who specialize in these kind of wage and hour violations under the FLSA, and they will tell you that the damages in this kind of case really, really start to add up. Because not only do you have to pay them back pay for all the extra work that they've done, but you're probably gonna have to pay them overtime. And on top of it, you're gonna pay statutory damages. So for the thousands of workers this man has in his factory, he's going to be on the hook for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in wage and hour violations. Not good. Boom, ba, boom, ba, doom, ba, dee, dee. 
May I introduce myself? Asa Slugworth, president of Slugworth Chocolates Incorporated. Now listen carefully because I'm going to make you very rich indeed. Mr. Wonka is at this moment working on a fantastic invention. The everlasting gobstopper. If he succeeds, he'll ruin me. So all I want you to do is to get hold of just one everlasting gobstopper and bring it to me so that I can find the secret formula. Your reward will be 10,000 of these. All right, so what Slugworth is trying to do here is engage in corporate espionage, basically trying to steal a trade secret. If the Gobstopper had been publicly released, then there would be nothing that could stop Slugworth from just simply buying one and trying to reverse engineer the Everlasting Gobstopper. However, since the Everlasting Gobstopper has not been publicly released, it still probably qualifies as a trade secret under Willy Wonka. So by asking Charlie to find an Everlasting Gobstopper and bring it back to Slugworth, he's essentially asking Charlie to engage in a conspiracy to commit a trade secrets violation. Now I know everyone's going to say, but Slugworth actually works for Willy Wonka. But here's the thing, a conspiracy can have different mens rea for different members of the conspiracy. That's how you can have a police officer who engages in a conspiracy, who's not guilty of the conspiracies, all the other co-conspirators. So you might get a weird situation where Charlie has violated the Trade Secrets Act by engaging in this conspiracy, while Slugworth has not. Boompa, loompa, doompa, da -dee. Now, will the children kindly step up here? Floods, fire, frost, of frippery. Accident? What kind of accident? I didn't know we had to sign anything for this tour. I can't see what it says in the bottom. Violet, you first. Sign here. Hold it. Let me through here, you kids. Violet, baby, don't you sign anything there. What's this all about? Standard form of contract. Don't talk to me about contracts, Wonka. I use them myself. They're strictly for suckers. Yes, but you wouldn't begrudge me a little protection. A drop. I don't sign anything without my lawyer. My broker don't sign anything either. Then she don't go in. I'm sorry, rules of the house. Okay, so Willy Wonka is trying to get the children to sign a liability waiver to limit how much exposure he has when things go terribly, terribly wrong. Now, I probably don't need to tell you that if you can't physically read the contract, that's going to be problematic for the person that's trying to disclaim the liability. That's called an unconscionable contract. There is some procedural or structural problem with the contract itself that makes it unconscionable for the courts to enforce. And if you can't physically see the tiny print at the bottom of this contract, that is a textbook unconscionable contract. But on top of that, Willy Wonka is going to have some problems with signing a contract with these children. Only the children here have signed them. They are minors. Uh, the parents, while they are present, are not the ones signing this contract. When a child signs a contract, generally speaking, that contract is voidable at the option of the minor. On top of that, this contract seems to be complete gibberish. Generally speaking, with a limitation on liability, you can disclaim things like negligence, but you can almost never disclaim recklessness. This contract doesn't appear to do any of that. Maybe that's in the fine print that no one can see, but it appears to be just a string of legal sounding words that don't actually have any real meaning. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Willy Wonka has not disclaimed any of his liability and he is going to have problems with civil suits later on down the line for his negligence and recklessness. What do you think will come of that? What are they doing there? It must be creaming and sugaring time. Well, they can't be real people. Well, of course they're real people. Stuff and nonsense. No, Oompa Loompas. Oompa Loompas? From Lumpa Land. Lumpa Land? There's no such place. Excuse me, Mr. dear lady. Mr. Wonka, I am a teacher of geography. Oh, well, then you know all about it. And what a terrible country it is. Nothing but desolate wastes and fierce beasts. And the poor little Lumpa Loompas were so small and helpless, they would get gobbled up right and left. A Wang Doodle would eat ten of them for breakfast and think nothing of it. And so I said, come and live with me in peace and safety away from all the wang doodles and horn swagglers and snoz wangers and rotten vermicious knids snoz wangers vermicious knids what kind of rubbish is that i'm sorry but all questions must be submitted in writing and so in the greatest of secrecy i transported the entire population of oompa loompas to my factory here 
Okay, so what Willy Wonka has admitted here is a huge immigration violation. He says that he secretly transported the entire population of a separate country of Loompa Land to his factory. A lot of problems here. Number one, I don't see any reasonable way he could have transported an entire country legally through immigration channels. On the other hand, it sounds like the Oompa Loompas were really facing quite a hardship in their native country. So conceivably, they could have been refugees seeking asylum in the United States or the UK, which actually might have allowed it to go through. But I don't get the sense from Willy Wonka that he went through the proper channels for an asylum claim either. Additionally, it sounds like he made a quid pro quo deal with the Oompa Loompas that he would transport them from Loompa Land, which is a ridiculous sentence to say, to his factory where they would live and work, and it doesn't seem like he's paying them anything. That seems like a clear violation of the 13th Amendment's prohibition against slavery and indentured servitude. It really does sound like he has transported these Oompa Loompas away from a place where they were in fear of being eaten alive every day so that they could become indentured slaves to his factory. I don't like the look of it. This is a, a kid's movie, right? Augusto, sweetheart, save some room for later. Oh, uh, Augustus, please, don't do that. My chocolate must never be touched by human hands. Please, don't do that. Don't do that. You're contaminating my entire river. Please, I beg you, Augustus. My chocolate. My chocolate. My beautiful chocolate. Don't just stand there, do something! Help. Okay, so Augustus fell into the Chocolate River because there was clearly no handrail protecting people from falling in. OSHA, or the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, requires that there be a handrail built to certain specifications to protect people like Augustus from falling in. On top of that, Augustus was touching a food product with his bare, dirty hands, which hadn't even been washed, and clearly contaminating this entire Chocolate River. Don't worry, he can't drink it all. In fact, if we rewind the clip to see the entire Chocolate River, we can see a number of health and safety violations. So if we take a look at this scene, we can see numerous health and safety violations that would shut this factory down immediately. Number one, we can see the OSHA violation that there's no guardrail protecting the Oompa Loompas from falling inside. We can also see that none of the Oompa Loompas are wearing hairnets. So all of that green hair is going to contaminate not just the river, but all of the other food products as well. At least the Oompa Loompas are wearing gloves, so they've got that going for them. On the other hand, Augustus Gloop was touching the chocolate river with his bare hands and has contaminated everything. Augusto, sweetheart, save some room for later. On top of that, there is no segregation between the candies that contain nuts and the candies that don't contain nuts, which means that anyone could have an allergic reaction because of cross-contamination. On top of that, there appear to be plants and trees growing on the factory floor itself, in addition to probably mold and other fungus. So there's no way that this factory could possibly be sterile enough to produce a food safe product. So all of these violations in and of themselves would require the factory to shut down immediately because of violations of the FDA and other health and safety statutes. They're not making any chocolate anytime soon. Why don't you try simply reading a book? Don't touch a thing. And in addition to the prior health and safety violations we just talked about, this room appears to have literal garbage strewn about the entire factory floor. Oompa, oompa, oompa dee dee. What's so fat about it? This little piece of gum is a three-course dinner. Bull. No, roast beef, but I haven't got it quite right yet. I don't care. Oh, I wouldn't do that. I really wouldn't. So long as it's gum, then that's for me. Violet, now don't you do anything stupid. <gasps> What's it taste like? It's tomato soup. It's hot and creamy. I can actually feel it running down my throat. Stop. Don't. Why doesn't she Every listen to Mr. Wonka? Better, because, better. Charlie, she's a nitwit. This sure is great soup. Hey, the second course is coming up. Roast beef and a baked potato. Mmm. With sour cream? <laughs> What's for dessert, baby? Dessert? Here it comes. Blueberry pie and cream. It's the most marvelous blueberry pie blueberry I've ever face. tasted. Holy Toledo, what's happening to your face? Cool it, Dad. Let me finish. Yeah, but your face is turning blue. Violet, you're turning violet, Violet. What are you talking about? I told you I hadn't got it quite right yet. You can say that again. Look what it's done to my kid. It always goes wrong when we come to the dessert. Mm. Always. Violet, what are you doing now? You're blowing up. I feel funny. 
So here, Violet Beauregard has been permanently disfigured by being basically turned into a blueberry. I got a blueberry for a daughter. Potentially under a negligence or recklessness theory, Willy Wonka is on the hook for whatever monetary damages are attributed to being permanently disfigured in that way. And it might sound crazy, but there's actually a very famous law school case called the Hairy Hand case, where a doctor promised a normal hand, but delivered a hairy hand, and the court had to determine the difference in value between a normal hand versus an unseemingly hairy hand. So the courts are in a position to determine what the damages are associated with being turned into a blueberry. On the other hand, Willy Wonka might argue that Violet disregarded his warnings and, and literally plucked the piece of gum out of his hand against his warnings not to eat it. And that might potentially work. But the thing about products liability is it's often strict liability, which means the courts don't actually look at fault per se, they just look to causation. Did a given product cause the harm associated with someone's damages? So it's possible that comparative fault won't be an issue and Willy Wonka will be on the hook. Doompa dee da. Charlie, it'll chop us to bits. We're in trouble, Charlie. I can't stop. It's pulling me in. All right, so it looks like the Wonka factory is evacuating the air directly out into the outside environment. And the same with the Chocolate River, which looks like it was flowing just right out into the environment, into waterways, then polluting into rivers and streams. I probably don't need to tell you that this is an environmental protection agency nightmare. Who knows what's happening to the environment because of the pollution that this factory is producing, he's likely to be fined severely for this kind of environmental pollution. I want the works, I want the whole works, presents and prizes and sweets and surprises of all shapes and sizes and now, don't care how I want it now, don't care how I want it now. <laughs> Yeah, that is manslaughter bordering on negligent homicide. A jury would convict Willy Wonka like that. Here, once again, Willy Wonka has taken no precautions whatsoever to protect people from uh, falling to their deaths as a result of falling into this equipment. There are no guardrails, there are no warnings whatsoever. I don't think it would be very difficult for a jury at all to pin the blame on Willy Wonka and to find that he's responsible, not just for the civil violation of wrongful death, but also the criminal violations of negligent homicide or manslaughter because of his reckless conduct and the fact that he is knowingly putting these people in this situation where they can easily die. If you are wise to listen to me. So the factory's yours, Charlie. You can move in immediately. And me? Absolutely. What happens to the, the rest The whole of family. I want you to bring them all. But Charlie, don't forget what happened to the man who suddenly got everything he always wanted. What happened? He lived happily ever after. Yeah, such a heartwarming ending. The only problem is that because Charlie has won this as a result of the contest, he's gotta pay taxes on his winnings. So while Charlie may be very happy in the moment, he doesn't realize that he's gonna be saddled with a tax bill in the tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. So unfortunately, he's probably gonna have to liquidate a large portion of the Wonka factory in order to settle up with the IRS. The truth is, when you get everything you want, you don't really live happily ever after. Sorry. So let's tally up Willy Wonka's civil and criminal liability here. First, Willy Wonka engaged in numerous OSHA violations, which resulted in serious foreseeable injury. The workplace hazards alone resulted in the deaths of apparently four children. So let's assume about $20 million per injured child. That comes to $80 million. On top of that, Willy Wonka engaged in the illegal practice of indentured servitude. I'd peg those civil violations somewhere around $5 million for the Oompa Loompas. And additionally, Willy Wonka engaged in an illegal sweepstakes lottery that probably cost consumers somewhere between $100 and $200 million in purchased chocolate, which you will have to disgorge. Which puts Willy Wonka's civil liability somewhere in the neighborhood of $235 million. So you get nothing! You lose! On the criminal side, it seems like Willy Wonka is guilty of numerous crimes against children, including multiple counts of reckless endangerment. I numerous counts of manslaughter and potentially negligent homicide. He's blocking all the chocolate. 
I think conservatively, each of those violations could bring with it a jail time of 20 to 30 years. So multiplying that by the four children that are permanently disfigured or dead as a result of Willy Wonka's actions, I would say conservatively, Willy Wonka is going to jail for between 80 and 120 years. Good day, sir. I said good day. With sweatshop owner and murderer W. Wonka in prison, Charlie's gonna have to ramp up his skill set pretty quickly. Otherwise, he'll have to lay off all the Oompa Loompas to pay off his tax bill. If Charlie wants to make candy as great as Wonka's, he should probably check out Skillshare's culinary courses, like Lisa Long's class on making English toffee. And since Charlie is only 12 years old, he's going to have to learn how to run a business on his own. He should check out Jay Hutch's class on starting an online business from scratch. Skillshare is an online learning community that has over 20,000 classes on everything like lifestyle, design, and technology. The first 500 Legal Eagles will get two free months of Skillshare when you click on the link below. The free premium membership gives you unlimited access to must-know topics so you can improve your skills and learn new things. It's like getting a golden ticket to success without all the child murder and tax evasion. So click on the link, get two free months of Skillshare, and start learning today. And until next time, I'll see you in court.